<laughs> Hi guys, welcome to another vlog. So today we are on our way to get candles or oh, learn how to make candles rather. So yeah, I think I'm gonna vlog that experience and hope you guys enjoy. The venue for the candle making, diffuser and linen spray class was at Ram Kiki in, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, is it Ram Kiki? Ram Kiki? Not too sure, but it's a family restaurant venue that's in Rotaport and it was a Saturday, very cold, I think it was a um, cold front that weekend nonetheless the venue was really gorgeous really pristine and tranquil and just the perfect venue just to go learn how to make your own candles your own reed diffusers and your own um home scents such as you know room and linen sprays so i really enjoyed this class and if you're into that type of stuff then do tune in i'm gonna take you through step by step on how to make these for yourself at home. So the class was hosted by a company called SA Candle Supply and I will list their website down below in the description box for those who are interested. So our beginner candle making class started off with just a description of the different types of waxes that you do get. So you get natural waxes and artificial wax waxes and then under natural waxes are those that are derived from natural materials and are not harmful to the environment and thus safer to use at home such as your soy wax, your coconut wax, beeswax, shea butter, stearic acid and so on and then um, under your artificial waxes you get your paraffin wax so I think we're all familiar with the paraffin wax candles So I think making candles at home is actually quite easy because you only need to choose wax, jars, wicks and fragrance oils which is just four items and then the rest of the tools that you need can be found at home. It's also so much cheaper and so much more creative to make your own candles at home instead of buying. So the first step is to set up your jars which means putting your wicks or attaching your wicks into your jar and that is done by using glue dots so you see me there rubbing the glue dot onto the wick so that it can adhere into my jar and we also use these steel um, devices to hold the wicks in place so right here we're actually starting with like a really huge um jar so it depends on the diameter of your jar so this is about a 70 millimeter to 80 millimeter diameter size jar and so for that you need two small wicks so that's what i'm doing right here and for information about the type of uh wick that's suitable for a specific type of jar please visit the sa candle supply website they have a whole lot of articles and blogs and a lot of information that will help you make the right decision also like what type of wig to choose from there's so many to choose from there's the below range there's v range there's the eco range and all depending on your specifications and your budget and so on
so luckily the the wigs actually come pre-tabbed with a metal sustainer um if you're wondering what the sustainer is it's that small metal disc that i was applying the glue dot onto and that is used to apply the wig to the jar so some of the lingo that i learned or the terminology or the jargon in candle making that i learned was fragrance throw and that is the evaporation or releasing of scent of the fragrance molecules whilst cold or whilst burning the warmer the wax becomes the further the scent will travel the wick, the wick size directly influences this process so therefore it makes it imperative to select the correct size with for the wax or the jar starting off with the paraffin wax candles you just have to stir your wax your melted wax until it gets to a temperature of about 60 degrees celsius and that is when you can start adding your fragrance oil so um remember the fragrance percentage is six to nine percent so we did six percent and how you calculate that is by taking the amount of wax you have and then applying the percentage fragrance throw that you desire and then adding that in milliliters so for example if you have a thousand milliliters of wax and multiply that by six percent that gives you um six 60 milliliters guys my maths for an accountant is really terrible excuse me but you can do the math quickly and then once it gets to about 60 degrees celsius you then pour into your jar and voila you have your candle so you do the first pour up to the first line and then you can do the second pour 24 hours later just so that you get that smooth surface the leftover wax that you have you can use that to make wax melts which if you're like me and you also don't know what wax melts are it's those um wax little cubes or blocks that you put on that diffuser or handle device that just spreads the fragrance around so it's similar to getting the fragrance in the room without necessarily burning a candle so i thought that was very cool the class was actually quite interactive hence you see me getting up from my seat go to my other how what do i call them classmates or the other people who were taking the class that day I would highly recommend this class it's such a great way to unwind and really get those creative juices going and i'd recommend it to go with your friend or your sister your boyfriend whatever it's really such a relaxing calming way and also great to get a new hobby get out there try something new try something different the next batch of candles we used were soy wax candles we used a soy wax and coconut wax blend which is called soy cocoa i believe um so the process is pretty much the same as with paraffin wax candles where you boil i mean you melt don't boil you melt the wax according to its specified uh, melting temperature which i believe is about 90 degrees and then you wait for it to get to about 70 degrees before you can start adding your um your fragrance but all these melting points and um pouring points they're all specified differently for the type of candle so please do check out the website for the exact um temperatures it is specified there and then you see me here just stirring it up stirring 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 and i'm waiting for it to get to the specified temperature before i can pour it into my jar you see i'm using my borrowed 
<laughs> my borrowed thermometer there once again using the very important essential wick holder and then you pour your scented wax into your jar and it's that easy very very simple process indeed so even here you wouldn't fill your wax all the way up to the brim for the first pour you would simply wait about 24 hours and then do the second pour and that's how you ensure that you get that nice even top no bubbles no holes and funny things so i actually missed my double wick candle up here so don't be like me do not remove that metal device or holder thing because that's what's gonna help your candle wick stay in place and that's what ultimately gives a good candle the wick if the wick is out of um place then your candle you end up burning one side of the candle more than the other which leads to obviously like wasted candle nobody enjoys throwing away a candle where it only burned half halfway and the other half of the candle just goes to waste so don't be like me guys so with the soy cocoa wax with the remainder of the wax that was left over in my jug we made outdoor candles so these because of the jars which are these i don't know what you call this is a terracotta but they make great outdoor candles you can have them like you know when you're having a braai or on your outside patio if you're having dinner on the patio these would be actually very cute and that is one thing that i love about candle making it's so fun and creative you literally do the same process over and over just using different jars using your imagination your creativity and really the options are endless there are so many different jars available out there that you can use there's colored ones there's frosted ones there's small ones large ones and literally the sky's the limit the fragrance oils that they have are so amazing this candle smells so good i used the I think this one was called the lime and lotus flower it smells so so good i also love the creativity that comes in choosing your own fragrances so for me personally i love essential oils and i have a whole bunch of essential oils at home so i was at home mixing different um, oils together i mixed lavender i mixed rose vanilla i came up with you know one candle that just smells amazing so as long as you get your percentages correct then you can really just go for it it's so much fun queen of improvisation and shortcut added again guys please don't do this don't use pens or any other objects to try hold your wig in place because it will move over time even you won't notice but if you're leaving it there to cure over days it will not remain straight in the in the position that it's meant to be and ultimately that affects the quality of your candle so just don't do it just use the proper tools so speaking of the proper tools you don't really need a lot but you will need a pot so you can use any pot that you have at home just to boil your water if you're using the double boiler method which is what i do so if you are familiar with the process of melting chocolate it's pretty much the same so you get a large pot and boil some water in there you um, add your wax into a jar so just chop it up or grate it into the desired amount that you need place it into the jar place the jar into the pot so that the steam from the boiling water will melt the wax and then you need either an infrared thermometer 
or a food thermometer just to get the uh, correct melting point uh, degrees just to measure if you're ready to also then add your fragrance oils at the correct degrees and whether you are ready to pour your wax into your jar at the correct degree we've reached the end of the vlog i hope you enjoyed if you did please like comment share and subscribe thank you for watching until the next one bye